Hey, what's going on YouTube? So this is my first YouTube video and probably last and that's okay. This is my sixth attempt, but here we go. I want to go through my entire Blu-ray collection. I just figured I want to share it online, maybe give people some recommendations or maybe I could see stuff that I've never heard of either. So we're going to go through some 4Ks, some, I guess, collection sets, and then we'll go through all the Blu-rays and some DVDs at the end. I think I have about 200. Maybe someone can count them for me. And Honestly, in the comments, if there's movies you recommend, please like let me know. I'm genuinely curious. I love movies. So, here we go. Alright, so the first 4K I have is the Planet Earth 2 and Blue Planet 2 a 4K combo pack. A really, really beautiful, beautiful imagery. Like, the videos are so clear. It's like the animals are right there. I mean, I've always seen Blue Planet 2 the first two episodes, but from what I've seen, it's, it's so... Ugh. And I love nature documentaries, like, in general. Like, I always watched Animal Planet as a kid. You know, The Most Extreme was, like, my favorite show. I was, I was like, a nerd like that. But, honestly, if, if you have the money of a 4K television and a 4K player, I highly recommend getting it. Uh, next, and I guess, last 4K set that I have that's all 4K is the Stanley Kubrick 3 Film Collection. Full Metal Jacket, one of my favorite movies ever. To to can't talk. 2001 A Space Odyssey. I haven't seen it yet. I know it's really slow and everything, but I think I'm ready for it. And The Shining. I did not like it as a kid, but you know, now, now that I'm a little older and I appreciate, I guess, slower movies now, I think, um, I think I'll like it a lot more this time, but no guarantees. No, actually, before we do that, let's, let's do this. Uh, Friday the 13th, the, the tin set. I think this one was hard to find, but Screen Factory made like a, a huge box, so this one doesn't, you know, this one's kind of irrelevant now. But no, my girlfriend bought me this for my birthday, so I'm not a huge Jason fan. Like, I only generally like the fourth movie, the seventh movie, and, you know, the sixth one was good too, um, Jason Lives. You know, so some of them I like, not that they're all like god awful, but you need to have like some friends and some beer to make them, like, you know, genuine, to make them good, but. You know, if you're a horror, like, I'm a horror fan, so you, you gotta have a, you gotta have all the Jason movies. And like I said, they're fun with a group of friends to watch. Just brainless movie, Jason killing people. But the only problem with, like, you know, um, there's not really so much blood in all of them. Now there's so much bloodier movies that have come out since you know the '80s and stuff. They they don't hold up as well, but they're they're classics. You gotta have. So next up, we have the 50 Year Planet of the Apes collection. Almost all of these movies are amazing. There's a few that aren't aren't so good, but the original one from 1968. Amazing movie, Rise, Dawn, amazing movies. I haven't seen War yet. And some of the other ones in the original series are good too. So, definitely pick this up. And it comes with some like posters and 4K discs of the newer movies too. So, definitely worth the money there. All right, so first up for the regular Blu-rays, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Good isolation horror movie with John Goodman and Mary Elizabeth Winstead. 12 Years a Slave, a uh, crazy movie. You know, crazy subject matter. Not a horror movie in a conventional sense, but really horrifying to go through if you were that man. Highly recommended. 22 Jump Street, really good comedy. Almost as good as 21, but I found it for cheap. So uh, we have 22. 28 Days Later, not my favorite zombie movie. I love the first half, the second half kind of drags, but maybe just give it another chance. 310 to Yuma. I haven't seen this yet, but I heard it's a really good western. I'm trying to expand my movie horizons. I mainly watch horror and comedies. But, you know, 300, another one I saw recently. Really good. Zack Snyder. Never gave it a chance. But, no, good stuff. Really good action. Interesting. 47 meters down, Uncaged. So I heard this one was better than the first one. Did not like the first one very much five bucks you're gonna hear that a lot if it was five bucks and i hear good things i usually get it if i haven't seen it yet so alien anthology this comes with the first four alien movies and special features uh, i've only seen the first three haven't seen the last one yet or well, not the last one but the alien resurrection the last one on this particular set but no i love the first alien love aliens i like alien 3 a lot of people hate on it but i think it's good not as good as the first two, but still a good movie. American Pie 4 Film Collection. All these are really good, I guess, sex comedies, raunchy comedies, for lack of a better term. 
But if you don't like the first one, I'll, you know, it's not that the others are going to be any different. So you know you're getting yourself into. Yeah, I talk too fast. Let me slow it down. American Pie, Book of Love. I had this one before I started collecting, so I just kept it. Not as good as the main series, but I, I like this one. It's not as horrible as people say. <clears throat> An American Werewolf in London. Really good horror comedy. Came out in 1981, I believe. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. You can get it for cheap. Obviously, it's a werewolf movie, and it has a really good transformation scene, as everyone knows. Army of Frankensteins, I have, well, can you, there you go. Army of Frankensteins, I have not seen this yet. I got it when I bought some new stuff on eBay, and it just came in one set, and, I mean, financially, it made sense. It, it was pretty much free, so if I don't like it, I'll just trade it in, or whatever. Aquaman, I saw this in the theater. I thought it was cool. So, yeah, don't know what else to say about it. Apocalypto, saw this when I was younger, haven't seen it since. Want to rewatch it. The first four, uh, 19, well, 1989, then 90s Batman movies. I love this first one. The second one is pretty good. Haven't seen this too, but I heard bad things about it. So I'm not excited to go through that. Big Bad Wolves heard great things about this. Have no idea what it's about. Black Christmas, one of my favorite horror movies, came out in 1974, predates Halloween. Really good. Slow, but creepy slasher movie. You know, it's probably one of the creepiest movies I've ever seen. The 1980s version of The Blob with uh, the girl from Saw, Shawnee Smith. Really good special effects. I saw it when I was like 13 for the first time, and I was like, good shit, bro. Damn, this shit keeps falling. The Breakfast Club, really good, I guess, dramedy, you know, but... <laughs> no, I saw it for the first time when I was in high school. This is another one I saw kind of late, but I was like, wow, this movie's... Like, nothing happens, but it's perfect. Really good. Uh, the Breakup, haven't seen this yet, but my girlfriend wanted to get it, and it was cheap. And it looks pretty funny. And people said good things about it. Boys in the Hood. Awesome. Awesome movie. I rewatch this like once a year. So good. Carrie, one of my favorites, 1976. John Travolta, Sissy Spacek. We all know Brian De Palma. Really good, like everything. Awesome movie. Even though it's weird, it feels kind of slow at times, but it's paced really well. Like, the time flies whenever I watch Gary. Uh, Catch Me If You Can, uh, really good Steven Spielberg movie. Uh, it's about this guy, based on a true story about this guy who, um, he like fakes his identity and is able to get around doing it for like a long period of time. And, you know, pretty much Tom Hanks' character is chasing Leonardo DiCaprio's character the, the entire movie. And there's twists and turns and stuff. John Carpenter's Christine, based on the Stephen King novel. Love this movie too. You know, cheesy, it's about a killer car that's like possessed and trying to, you know, kill people. And there's more to it, obviously, but really good. Another movie called Christine, which I highly recommend, based on a true story. I don't want to give anything away about it, but, you know, just look into it if you can. The complete Chucky 7 movie collection, you know, barring the remake. Most of these movies are pretty good. You know, most horror franchises are really up and down, but I, I think Chucky overall has decent quality. The only really bad ones I would say is Seed of Chucky. And, and that's it. Even Cult of Chucky isn't terrible. Like, it's, it's more than watchable. It's, it's fine. It's, I wouldn't, it's not one of my favorites, but Chucky, good, good horror series. Produced by Eli Roth. Because, well, if you watch the special features, well, okay, well, it's called Clown. If you watch the special features, Eli Roth produced it because was, there was, like, this YouTube video that this guy made for, you know, this, this movie. It was, like, a parody trailer he put produced by Eli Roth. And Eli Roth actually saw it, and he found the movie interesting, and he ended up producing it in real life. So, pretty cool story behind it. Yeah. And that takes care of the first shelf, so we're going to switch to shelf two. Alright boys, we have made it to shelf two. If you hear any thumping, it's because it's, it's raining outside, so it ain't me.
All right, let's go. Next, Creed, follow up to the Rocky series. Obviously, I put Rocky with the R, but Creed, awesome follow up to Rocky. It's, it's like a modern day reboot too. So if you tried Rocky and you found it, you know, I would say try it again. It's a great movie. But if, if you found Rocky too slow, you tried it and it's really not for you, try Creed. I, you'll probably get, you know, it's more accessible to modern audiences because people can't handle a lot of slow movies these days. Uh, Creed 2, I haven't seen this one yet. People said it's pretty good. I, I don't expect it to be bad. I just haven't gotten around to it. The Crucible with Daniel Day Lewis and Winona Ryder. I saw this in high school because we, we read the, I guess, the play by Arthur Miller. And I, I liked it. It's about, um, you know, these, the Salem witch trials. And a lot of it holds up today because, you know, obviously a lot of, you know, a lot of different crimes. You, you get accused. People think you're guilty automatically. So this kind of shows how mass, is her mass hysteria, Jesus, mass hysteria can lead to, you know crazy situations and obviously this happened and really really good acting really good period piece awesome movie the dark knight trilogy i saw these really late i know i i only saw the dark knight rises in the theater and it was at a midnight showing because my sister wanted to see it so i just went i was like fuck it whatever i mean i remember liking it but i was also tired i fell asleep during it long ass movie at midnight you know but I found Batman interesting, but I was more of an anime guy, you know, so I was, you know, I was stubborn to try out, like, all these different mediums, and, you know, you can't like everything, you know, you gotta pick and choose, like, what, what things you like, but, no, Batman Begins, I saw it for the first time, I think, two months ago, holy f is great movie, great movie, yo, great, great movie, holy shit, and I saw The Dark Knight, you know, two, two days later, awesome movie again, you know, it's good stuff, and I expect the third one to be great as well. It's great stuff. I, I, I'm so mad at myself for starting late. I feel dumb. Dawn of the Dead remake made by Zack Snyder and Land of the Dead. Haven't seen this one yet. This is an awesome remake. Uh, well, awesome movie. I never saw. I haven't seen the George Romero original, but awesome remake. Good zombie movie. Holds up really well. Demolition Man, a little action comedy from the 90s with uh, Stallone, Wesley Snipes, and Sandra Bullock. You know, cheesy, but if you like, you know, 90s action movies, that's, you know, that's your thing. I like that movie. Disclosure, a 90s drama with Demi Moore and Michael Douglas. Uh, this one's really good, too. I just think it runs a little too long. Like, this is, like, the end. If you watch it, you know what I'm talking about. There's, like, this extra 30 minute ending that could have been chop, chopped down to like five minutes. It just went on for too long. But good, other than that, good movie. Like I was, I was on the edge of my seat a couple of times. Dario Argento's Demons. Uh, if you never heard of this, you know, this is an Italian horror movie. Really good, bloody, awesome, great music. You know, well, Mario, ba well, not Mario Bava, Lamberto Bava directed it, but Dario Argento produced it. I don't like, you know, all of their movies, nor haven't have I seen all of them yet, but this one I liked. I gave it a chance when I was younger. I think it was on on demand. I just turned it on and I was I was pleasantly surprised. This uh Devil produced my uh, M Night Shyamalan. I liked it when I was younger. Now I saw it last year. Didn't really like it that much. A little disappointed about it. Uh, this is an anime series called Devil's a Part-Timer. Uh, I saw it on Netflix, I think five years ago, and I think they took it off, and then I bought it, but I think they add, I think they put it back on now, or I don't remember, but it was a short anime series, so it was like the whole thing was like, I think 35 bucks. I was like, oh yeah, awesome show. Recommend it, definitely. Dirty Grandpa, raunchy comedy. You know, I like it, good stuff. Right, both these movies deserve better, I know, but I got I got this before I started collecting. So this this is my favorite movie ever. So I'm doing a huge disservice right now. Django Unchained. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Go see that movie. And Inglorious Bastards. Uh, I didn't like it very much the first time I saw it, but I got to give it a second chance. You know, and, but I did like certain parts of the movie, obviously. But you know, the whole you know I saw it late at night, so I was probably tired. You know, you gotta see movies at the right mood. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm an anime guy, or at least I think I said that, so 
Oh, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F. I gotta get Battle of Gods. I don't have that one yet. And the new uh, Broly movie. Awesome, awesome movie. It was the first time I saw a Dragon Ball movie in the theater, and I, and I went with my boy. It was, it was, it was awesome. I never got to see like Dragon Ball like in the in a theater. You know, it was, it was great. One of, one of the best things I did like recently, especially with like everyone being inside and everything. You know. Don't breathe. A uh, pretty intense horror movie that you know came and went. You know, it was a big, somewhat a big deal when it came out. People don't really talk about him anymore. Made by. Fede Alvarez, who made the Evil Dead remake. Uh, it's a good movie about these, you don't really know who to root for, about these criminals who break into a, a guy's house, but he's old and blind, and then there's, you know, twists, and nothing is, is as obvious as you see, and in the premise, don't breathe, is that because he's blind, you know, he can't see them, but his other senses are heightened because he has to rely on his hearing and other things to get by because he's blind. Euro Trip. uh... I thought it was okay. I thought I would like it more because I like the movie Road Trip in America. Someone's fucking cutting the leaves and, you know, anywho. But not as funny as Road Trip, which isn't as funny as American Pie. But if you like American Pie and you like Road Trip, you'll like Euro Trip. It has some funny parts. Uh, Evil Dead Remake by Fede Alvarez, who I just spoke about. I was super excited for this movie. And well, I'm saying it like I'm disappointed. I, I liked the movie. I was super excited. You know, I, I, I th when I first saw it, I didn't like how they changed a lot of things. Like, they didn't make, you know, it was, every character was named different. There was no Ash, you know, things like that. But, you know, it was a bloody good time. It really was. Not as easy to watch as the original one. It's more like, more intense, more gritty. So not as fun of a movie. But definitely very raw, very good. I like it. I think most people who like the original like this one too, which is good because many horror remakes are notorious for being utter garbage. Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead, one of my favorite horror movies ever. I saw this way too young. I'll probably go into it in a different video if interested, but that's probably where I got a lot of my love of horror movies. It's a sick movie. It has some humor in it, but it's a, it's a straight up horror movie. Don't let people tell you the first one is a horror comedy. I'm like this one. Evil Dead 2, which is a horror comedy. I hated this movie when it first came out. Because in my opinion, I was like, I thought this was the greatest movie I, like, ever made. So when I saw this and how the tone was so different, I was like, it, it ruined Evil Dead, you know? But I came around to it. I like it now. I don't love it. I'll always watch Evil Dead, you know, over this one. But obviously, because this is part two, I end up watching, you know, both back to back. So it kind of doesn't mean anything anyway. But... I'll always choose Evil Dead one over the second one. And I don't have Army of Darkness because I'm not, well, I haven't seen it yet. I'm not really a fan of the, the slapsticky stuff. I'd rather Evil Dead be serious, but that's just my opinion. Little underrated, cla well, I don't know if it's a classic, but underrated movie, Excision, if you never heard of it. It's a coming of age, it's disturbing, slow teenage movie i don't know how else to describe it really good it has um it has the girl from 90210 and is ray wise in it i think yeah ray wise is in this too so you know if you like horror movies you like disturbing weird bloody creepy stuff you know coming of age at the same time that this is the, it's a good movie my girlfriend enjoyed it a lot too actually which i found surprising she doesn't like disturbing things all too often but anywho the Exorcist of, you can't even see, there we go, Exorcist of, or Exorcism of Emily Rose, Jesus, using an iPhone, there we go, see, there you go, um, I didn't like this when I was younger, gave it a, another chance recently, really good, it's a, it's, it's like a crime thriller horror, you know, it's a, it's a horror movie, the horror isn't, you know, that scary, in fact, those are kind of the worst parts of the movie, believe it or not, in my opinion, the courtroom drama stuff is really good. It's like pretty much a, a priest is in you know trial because he's saying, oh, did you kill Emily Rose? But he genuinely thought that she was possessed and doctors were saying, oh, obviously she's not, but it's not as obvious as you think. You know, Chris Duckman did a whole video pretty much with my exact thoughts, so I'm not gonna say, if I'm, if I'm not gonna add anything new to it, there's no point in me going into it, but good, great movie. Uh, the original The Exorcist, phenomenal horror movie. Like, 
like most classics when I was younger. And I was like, eh, it was okay. Not scary. Like the girl turns her head and vomits, who cares? But the the true horrifying thing is, you know, the story itself or the battle between, you know, the demon and uh, Father Karras. You know, it's been a while. I don't remember. But I've seen this, you know, maybe three times and it's probably going to be a fourth time pretty soon. Really, really good movie. Very easy to, for me to watch. Very easy. Once it starts playing, I'm not doing anything else. Expendables. Uh, I saw this in the theater. I saw this on FYE for two ninety nine, and I remember enjoying it. So I was like, "Fuck it." Fatal Attraction. Michael Douglas and uh, Glenn Close has a nice little uh, his poster Blu-ray slip. Good. Uh, I guess erotic thriller. Yeah, crazy about uh, this guy who cheats on his wife and uh, cheats with the wrong girl and. Things just keep getting progressively worse and worse, you know? David Cronenberg's The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. I saw this for the first time last year. You know, since I started buying these, I was like, let me collect a lot of horror movies I always wanted to see or rewatch so I don't have to worry about streaming. So that's how a lot of these started. But The Fly, awesome movie, awesome effects, awesome story, like everything. So good. Frozen, but not the Disney one. This is the horror movie Frozen. Uh, I saw that we rented this on Netflix when they used to give out CDs, and we loved it. So I, I remember this movie, and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get this. Really good stuff. It's about three kids who are trapped on a ski lift. Let me hold it up. Who are trapped on a ski lift, so they have to survive the entire weekend, but it's like negative whatever, and they're freezing, frostbite. Scary stuff. Like if you were just trapped on a ski lift with no gear and sh shivering for an entire weekend, you would probably jump down. You know. Fruitvale Station. Michael B. Jordan. Haven't seen it yet. I think it's. I believe it's about police brutality. I got. I got to get to that. Grave of Fireflies. Uh, animated. Well, I guess anime made in Japan. But it's about the uh, aftermath of the atomic bomb dropping on Japan and how it affects these two kids once their mom dies and they have to survive. It's it's tough. Tough stuff. Green Inferno. I have a soft spot for a lot of Eli Ross movies. Ironically, not really Cabin Fever. I like I like his other stuff more. Cabin Fever is good, but. You know, for one, I don't own it, and two, I don't know. I find the Green Inferno just more fun. You know, it's it's about these people who want to go and save this tribe in is it South America. Yeah, in the Amazon. Yeah, and then it turns out that they're a cannibal tribe, and then things get bad to worse because the, the group that they were trying to protect is now trying to eat them, and there's the you know other governments are involved trying to take down the forest. You know, it's a lot a lot of stuff going on. A lot of people rag on it, but. Yeah. You like what you like. Green Room. This is probably top 10 horror thriller. It's both. This is a horror movie and a thriller movie. It does both. Like, it sounds like the Lambs level type shit. This movie's really good. Most people who've seen it will agree, but I think it should have even more recognition. Like, I seriously think Green Room is one of the best we had last decade. I love Green Room. Uh, the Grudge. Found it for five bucks. I thought, it, you know, when I first saw it, I was like, well, not when, when I first saw the Blu-ray, I thought it would be good. Then after I bought it, I looked into it. A lot of people said, oh, it's not that good. So I've you know, been holding it off, but that's a habit I need to stop doing. Just, just watch the movie, then make my own determination. Now I'm like, oh, let me listen to what they say. Then, you know, mm -mm. this is the 2018 Halloween. Awesome reboot. I have the original Halloween, but it's a steel book. I'm gonna do steel books at the end. I don't have too many. So I'll just put them in their own section. Yeah, I think this, uh, what was what was before this movie? The uh, H2O or Halloween Resurrection? Yeah, like, it, it was really bad. Oh no, the Rob Zombie movie. I, well, I like the first Rob Zombie movie. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a defender of that one. The second one was god awful. And after that second Rob Zombie movie, they took a pause for like 10 years and they made this movie. I saw it was in the theater. Awesome. Really good. Has both the the stealthy John Carpenter elements to it, and it has some good kills in gore too. Awesome. Damn. Uh, Hatchet, really good, uh, cheesy, cheesy slasher. You know, not to be taken seriously at all. Like the gore is, you know, the gore is great, but it's, you know, it looks fake, but it's, it's supposed to be over the top, like, happy tree friends type shit. Hatchet 2, I don't like this one as much, you know, I don't know. I don't really look for story and, horror movies like at all but 
Something about Hatchet 2 just, I don't know. Didn't really like it that much. I don't hate it though. The Hatchet 3 is a lot better. I, I think it has better kills. I think the premise is a lot better. You know, I just think it makes, it was more fun of a movie. I think Caroline Williams from Texas Chainsaw 2 was in it. Yeah, can't complain. And that finishes the next show, so give me a few, and I'm going to go to the next. Well, I said next twice, but I'm going to go to the third show, so give me a second. All right, we made it this far. You're a real one, because now we made it to the third shelf. The Hangover. Awesome comedy. I don't need to say anything about that. Everyone's seen The Hangover. If you haven't, go watch it. Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Um... This one isn't really too well known, at least in my opinion. A lot of people don't talk about it very much, you know. Obviously, people know about it, but you know what I'm saying. Not hyper mainstream, at least not to my awareness. Just really gritty, raw, disgusting, like, movie of just following a, a serial killer. You know, it's, I, I don't think it's based on a, maybe, I don't think it's based on a true story, but it's, the, the way it was executed was really good. It's really, just raw, I think raw would be the best way of describing it. Movie, if, yeah, if you want something disturbing that follows a serial killer, try Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. You, you would like it, in my opinion. Sorry, I didn't sell it at all. I just don't know how to describe it. <laughs> at least off the top of my head. I found this at the dollar store, uh, Hell Ride. It says Tarantino Presents, so hopefully one dollar, that'll be worth it. The Hills Have Eyes collection. Uh, this came with the remake, which came out in 06, which is one of my favorite movies. Awesome. It's, I, I'm using that word a lot, but uh, honestly, this movie so, is it's so grotesque. So, like, so non-stop. Like, once it gets started, it's, it's crazy. Like, what would you do in this situation if you were attacked by, like, these, like, desert... Nuclear people, you know what I'm saying? Then the part two follow-up. I, mean, I put it in the first 30 minutes. It, it was too cheesy, so I, I stopped it. But you know, I'm sure it's bloody and, you know, no. I'm sure the story is just complete garbage. But it came with both. But I really recommend the first one. Like, really, if you want, if you want an intense horror movie, try The Hills Have Eyes. Like, I can't even talk about it. That's how much I like it. I'm stumbling over my words. I don't know how I made it this far in the video. But... I like the box, so I kept it, but it's taking up a lot of space. But the Hostel Collection, 1, 2, and 3. The first one is, in my opinion, a genuinely good, intense horror movie. You know, torture porn is used to describe it a lot, but... In my opinion, it gets the job done. It, it, it gives you a reason of why these boys would go to the, you know, the hostel. They're a bunch of horny, horny kids who want to get laid, and... They overlook obvious dumb signs so it's too late and, you know, shit happens. But I'm using the word intense for a reason. If, you know, if you don't like blood or it's too extreme for you, you know, things like that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, go anywhere near these movies. But if you like intense horror, definitely give Hostel a shot. Don't just let, you know, the internet say, oh, it's terrible. It's like, it's fine. Especially the, first, the second and third one, you can argue, aren't that good, but... The first one. The House of the Devil. Um, this movie is really important to me because it, it, it was one of the first ones to really show me slow movies can be really good as long as they're executed really well. I mean, in my opinion, this is really slow, suspenseful, but I love this movie. You know, I could watch it again, like right now. I'll be just so enthralled in it. Just, I, I don't know. It's cinematography, like the music, the 80s aesthetic. It's, it's really, if you love 80s horror, just horror in general, you haven't seen it, just give it a watch. Watch it in the dark. You'll probably, you'll, I don't know, I can't talk. I have, I have a weird speech block thing. We're just, just going to keep moving before I, before I look stupid. The Hunt. Uh, good horror thriller. That's uh, It makes fun of both sides of the political spectrum. So, well, some people probably got offended and gave it a bad review. Because I was watching, I'm like, this movie's fun. It's just, and it doesn't go, in my, in my opinion, doesn't go too far with the political stuff. Like, as soon as they're like, eh, okay, they'll make fun of the other side. So it's like, all right, whatever. And it's it's just, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's not nonstop. Okay, let me just, yeah. 
Ideal home, I have no idea what this is about, but I got it for one dollar. So there you go. I, 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 I don't know how I got this. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't remember any, I don't know if it's even good. It's called Incarnate. I haven't seen it yet. The Innkeeper is uh, made by the same, same guy who made a, I just talked about it too. Kidding. The House of the Devil, Ty West. Uh, this one's not as good, but I like this one too. This one's you know, another slow, suspensefully type of movie. But this, this one's more uh, more comical. It's, a, it's more funny, you know. You can... Would I call it a horror comedy? Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's a bit of a horror. It depends on who you are. It's, it's like borderline. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Really good 70s movie with Jeff Goldblum again. But Leonard Nimoy, a couple other people. Really suspenseful, very creepy idea. How um, everyone's being replaced by like almost like, not doppelganger, not the right way of saying it, but you know, everyone's being replaced by like an emotionless version of themselves and it's like a mystery of what the fuck is going on. And when you find out, it's like gross. And, ugh. I Saw the Devil, a crazy Korean action horror movie about a, a detective who goes too far to get revenge against this, I guess, mo this Japanese, you know, gangster guy, and then he ends up going way too far to the point where the gangster guy starts to get back at him because he keeps beating him up and leaving him alive instead of just finishing the job because he's too, you know, too angry towards him. So it teaches you that, yeah, you know, revenge is nice and everything, but if you go too far, you just end up fucking yourself. Oh, intense movie here. Oh, I Spit on Your Grave. You know, it's it's a it's a rape and revenge movie. So just by saying that, if not if that's not your thing, then definitely don't don't watch it. I Spit on Your Grave Part Two. I like this one more than the first. Well, well, these are well, this is a remake of a '70s movie. So I like this one more than the remake. I don't. It's more. It's like a more. It's a more intense version. You guys, a little more stupid. Like it's it's. Like, it's a, little, a lot more over the top, but that's why I like it. Like, it's, it's, it's so extra. Uh, it, 2017, good horror movie. Can't complain. It, chapter two, not as good. And I also had a bad theater experience. Like, we went to a mom and pa theater, you know, wanted to support them. The chairs were bad, the food was shit. Uh, the kids wouldn't shut up like it was it wasn't a good theater experience and even if it was it wasn't a bad movie it's way you know way too long and yeah it's just boring some boring it's and we all know boring is worse than being bad so that is not a win like at all jaws the steven spielberg classic nothing else needs to be said john dies at the end uh, dollar store pickup I got last week. Haven't opened it yet. John Wick 1. I saw this in the theater and I fell asleep. And I kind of forgot how good it was. And then everyone obviously talks about how good John Wick was. And I was like, the movie's okay. I just remembered being asleep during it. But I gave it a second chance and, you know, need I say less. It's awesome. I don't know what mood I was in when I saw it the first time. John Wick 2, I didn't finish this yet. I started it, and then uh, I think I, got, I had to do something. I just never put it back. Um, yeah, got to get on that. Just, just, can't talk. Just Mercy, really good movie about a, about a man who was accused of murdering someone that he did not do, but because if you're you know already convicted of the crime, people already looked at you as a felon, so no one wants to really help you out. But Michael B. Jordan is the attorney who wants to, you know, give him a second chance, saying, I don't really think you did this, let's see what we can do, and based on a true story, you know, all, all that good stuff. You gotta, you, you need to watch movies like this, mandatory to you. A Jurassic World 5 movie collection. I regret buying this, because I now have a 4K player, so I could have gotten, you know, 4K versions of this. So I may sell it off or give it away if I do videos in the future or something. Because... You gotta get the 4K version now, right? Killer Clowns from Outer Space, awesome 80s cheese. Literally the title describes the movie. Killer Clowns come from Outer Space. They kill people in fun, creative ways. You can't, you can't beat that, you know. 
Good stuff. Peter Jackson's King Kong, three hour, you know, epic ass movie with Naomi Watts, Jack Black. You know, awesome dinosaur fights. The, the New York scene is good. You, you know, just long. You know, you gotta find time to, or you could break it in half, but I don't like breaking movies in half unless I really have to, or if I have to get through something, but. Yeah, I mean, if they made it shorter, it'd be a lot more easier to rewatch. Like, I, I would imagine people don't rewatch this one often. It's, you know, it's long. How long is it? Yeah, three hours and eight minutes. Extended cut, three hours and 20 minutes. So, jeez. Peter Jackson. A Kiss of the Damned. I have to watch this again. I liked it. It's like a vampire erotic thriller movie. It has some okay gore in it. I really don't remember the plot. I think it was like two sisters, two vampire sisters fighting over a guy so you know it, it was interesting you know i'm sorry I, i'm doing everything all these off the top of my head so i'm just gonna start running through these knives out fell asleep <laughs> i gotta watch it again everyone says it's great i'm sure it is knock knock one of my favorite movies eli roth again i watch i rewatch this one pretty often i like showing people this movie i find it funny people get it, it gets different reactions out of people that's why i like showing it Krampus, good Christmas horror movie. The last one here is The Last House on the left. Awesome remake of the 70s Wes Craven classic. I think he produced this one too, so that was good. And it's a good movie on its own. You don't need to watch the, the original. I think it's better than the original, or at least up to par. You know, some people will debate me on that, but I think it's better than the original. So check out Last House on the left. And that finishes the third row, so we're going to go on to the fourth. All right, guys, next shelf, we made it to the L's. Well, I think we started L's last time, but we're gonna keep going with the L's. Leatherface, a nice little reboot follow-up to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. My favorite, but I don't even know what my favorite horror movie is. I, I love a lot of horror movies, but. No, this one isn't anywhere near as bad, people say. Don't listen. Uh, you just can't go into it expecting your typical Leatherface, like, with a chainsaw. Like, don't listen. It's, it's more of a road horror movie, more akin to um, Devil's Rejects, you know. And yeah, you know, obviously the, the story isn't the best. And obviously, it's like more of a whodunit as well. And it's, they try to set someone up and it's too obvious. Like you're like, okay, it, can, it can't be him. It's way too obvious. But other than that, it has really good gore. You know, it, it's paced really well. I like it a lot. It's a good movie. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, Lincoln. Is this Spielberg, right? Yeah, a Spielberg movie. I liked it a lot. I like history, so I found you know, this movie very interesting. If you don't like history, then... I mean, it's well-made, so you may like it, but if you really like hate history and like Civil War and stuff, you're, you're going to hate it. It's like two and a half hours, too, so it's, you know, it's not for everybody. Lights Out, I love this in the theater. Haven't seen it since, but I picked it up because it was five bucks, and yeah. I don't remember much about it. It reminds me of Dark, it's like Darkness Falls, but better, pretty much. If I, when I, that was my initial opinion on it when I saw it, I was like, it's like Darkness Falls, but like better in every way, or in most ways. Uh, Jessica Chastain, Mama, I haven't seen this one yet. Heard it was okay. I like horror, so okay horror is probably really good to me. Crazy disturbing movie with a warning label that most people know about. Martyrs, French movie, watch it in French, get the original version. Uh, it's a really ferocious movie. I don't even, yeah, just, if, if you can handle it, if you can handle intense scenes, like genuinely intense scenes, definitely go for it. And it has a nice, well not nice, but a somewhat deep message or ideas it tries to present to you regarding like the afterlife and how far like the human body could be pushed in several other topics. Really crazy movie. Misery, another one of my favorites, Kathy Bates, James Cann doing, uh, doing her thing about a crazy girl who likes this man's writing and when he gets in an accident, she takes care of him but won't let him go until he writes the story that she wants. Korean movie, Mother, I believe it's made by the guy, oh, no, who made The Host. I didn't finish this one yet. I had a headache the day I was trying to watch it, and I didn't want to forcefully get through it, so I had to try it another time. This is another disservice, because this is one of my, another one of my favorites, The Mist, 
Frank Darabelt. It's a combined case with 1408. I haven't seen this one since I was like younger. I, I used to love this movie a lot, but I don't think I like this one as much. So I kind of don't want to rewatch it. But I, you know, I'm gonna have you know what I mean. I'm scared to rewatch it because I I don't think I'm gonna like it as much. So, but The Mist, ooh, Mist is a great movie. Wow, even if you don't like horror movies, watch The Mist, bro. Nightmare on Elm Street collection, all seven original movies. Doesn't have the remake. We don't need the remake, but it has one through seven. You know, first one is the best. Third one, a lot of people love the third one. I used to love it, but when I rewatched it last year, I didn't think it was. I thought it was like too horror for comedy, too comedy for it was. I felt like it was too much in the middle. It felt dry, but weirdly enough, I saw the fourth one. The first time I ever saw the fourth one, and I thought the fourth one was like really good. Well, no. it was a, it was a lot more entertaining because I felt like the fourth one knew what it was trying to do. A lot more cheesy. It had the really good nightmare track by Tuesday Night in the beginning. A lot more goofy. Freddy had a lot more I guess energy. I I, I liked what it was giving me. But Freddy Three just felt like dry, like hospital. I don't know. Maybe I gotta watch it again because I love. I, I always liked the third one, so I found that weird, but. First one is really good, like, obviously. Not, nothing needs to be said about the first one. Wes Craven's New Nightmare, I didn't finish, but I liked what I saw. I only saw like, the first like 40 minutes and I had to do something that day. But I just wish Freddy had more justice. Like This is a kind of shitty uh, Blu-ray set, you know? It has decent special features, especially for the first movie, but you know, Jason got a whole fucking tin. You can't, you know. Now You See Me, pretty good uh, thriller about I guess magicians I don't I don't really I don't know people love that movie you know I found it at Walmart for like five bucks oh I'll get it that was okay probably gotta watch it again maybe I didn't get it uh, anime guy so Naruto Shippuden movie collection um, I probably should have like invested in the original Naruto show blu-rays because Shippuden is too much filler you can't get that and you know not, you know these aren't like the third movie is actually pretty good. I, I fuck with the third movie. The second movie I liked, but I don't like it as much now. Haven't seen the first or the fourth yet. It's just how life went down. I haven't seen those, but... You know, sometimes these movies aren't that good, but... Eh. The third one makes it worthwhile, because I got the whole set for cheap, and the third movie is actually pretty good. I like it. This is actually a good movie, though, like Naruto the Last. Nice little send-off to Naruto. You know, if you, if you like the anime, this has some, you know, some weird, I don't want to say weird, but kind of change where the series would, or it, it solidified the change that the end of Shippuden was trying to do. Let's, let's say that. Pretty good movie. Night of the Demons, one of my favorites again. Awesome 80s movie. Nice body, you know, body count implying death, not sex, but there's a lot of sex in here, a lot of nudity. I don't know, I've seen this like six times, like, it's just a really good movie. Angela makes a good villain, um, yeah, and the black guy makes it out. You know, Roger actually survives, <laughs> so that's, that's good. Not as, I guess, cherished, but even more cheesy, but not as good sequel, Night of the Demons 2. Uh, though for those who have seen it, you guys know the, I guess the priest lady, is that her name? Like, she makes this movie. If it weren't for that character, this movie would have been, like, horrible. I'm not, pretty bad. But that, that priest character at the end, or, you know, she's, she's throughout the movie, but when she, like, she, you, when you watch it, you know, it's, it's, it's good. If you like the first one, you should like the second one, you know. Uh, the... George Romero produced, but I believe, but Tom Zavini directed Night of the Living Dead. It's a shot for shot, almost remake of the original. So, I, I like it. I don't think it's mandatory. Like if you've seen the original, you kind of don't need to see this, but they made this because he didn't copyright the original. So they weren't making any money. So they made this version so they can like own it, you know, but. It's not, you know, it's, it's a color version, it has more blood a little bit, but it feels dated because it's like a 60s movie in color, so it's, it's a little weird. Like, weird acting, I don't know, maybe it's some weird acting in there. And a bunch of other stuff, but I'm making it sound bad, it's, it's, it's fine. Office Space, uh, Mike Judge, I believe, I saw this for the first time two weeks ago. 
awesome movie. I never even heard of this movie. I don't know where it was my entire life, but I'm really glad I saw Office Space. <laughs> awesome movie. Uh, again, anime guy. So One Piece film gold. Uh, even though it's One Piece movie takes place in the One Piece is a really long show, so it takes place in the second half of the show. Really good movie. Uh, this takes place in the first half. Uh, Strong world. Uh, there's a lot. There's like twelve One Piece movies, but I only have like three. And do I have four? No, I only have three. These are like the the main ones, like the big th theatrical big deal ones. Uh, this one was really good too. Strong world. All three of them are good, and this is One Piece film Z. This takes place in the second half. Uh, I think I think this one may, they're all. I, I don't know which one is the best. I can't choose. They're all like equally as good, but we'll get a little closer so you can see. But for for different reasons, you know. Sorry if I'm like awkward. It's the first time ever doing this, so you know. We'll we'll, we'll survive. We made it to O. So, Orphan with Vera Farmiga. I saw this in the theater. Um, you know, it, I think it holds up. If you know the twist, you know, it's not as good because you already know the whole time, but, you know, if you show someone this movie who's never seen it, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Outpost, this came in some eBay pack where I wanted two, only needed two out of like the 10 he was selling, but the price he gave was so cheap, so these were like effectively free. I don't think the guy knew like... Like two, it was weird. Like it was like ten Blu-rays, and he gave the whole thing away for like twenty bucks. I was like, all right, whatever. The uh, Outpost is like part two, I guess. Like Rise of Spetsnaz. I haven't seen the first, so another one of my favorite. I like Wes Craven. I'm a Wes Craven guy. Uh, People Under the Stairs, underrated, really good '90s horror movie about these two crazy people who pretty much kidnap kids and. You know, this one main character is trying to break in the house to, to save someone who he thinks is trapped in the house. Amongst other things. You know, my synopses are terrible. But that's what happens when you don't have time to prepare. I'm not good at living. But Poltergeist, Steven Spielberg, and uh, Toby Hooper classic. They're here. You know. I really, you know, this is a good movie. I want to see the second one. I, people said the second one was not too bad, so I'm, I like horror, so I'm interested in seeing part two. But this one, part one, awesome, you know, beginner horror movie, as I would like to call them. Like, if, you know, maybe your kid's like, I guess, seven? I don't want to sound bad, but seven's too young, but you know, six, you know seven? I think seven will handle Poltergeist. You know, I don't know, I'm not a parent, I'm just, I'm just guessing. But. Psycho Complete Collection has. The first, well, the, the four Psycho films, and they made Bates Motel. The first is, you know, a Hitchcock classic. It's master. It holds up. It's black and white. Some parts are kind of weird, but it, 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 it holds up really well. Go watch it. I don't care if you don't like slow black and white movies. Go watch it. Psycho 2. I'm glad I'm not the only person who thinks this, because, you know, I, I learned online that Psycho 2 is actually a good movie. I didn't believe it. I saw it for myself, and I'm in the camp that Psycho 2 is better than the first one, in, in my opinion. I'll, and I'm glad it's not heinous to really say. A lot of people agree. Son, son about the set, you know, it's really good. Really good. It was probably the most surprising movie I saw last year, like in regards to like how good I expected a movie to be. Like, you expect Psycho 2. A sequel that came out like I think it came out in 1982 you know like 30 years after the first one or 25 years after the first one but no it's it's really good really good I'm sorry I keep gushing over it but I was just so surprised at how good it was the Rambo set uh yeah you know this is mall set not not like the Jason tin or anything love first blood awesome no top 10 of all time in my opinion love first blood don't care what anyone says uh, two and three are okay. I have to watch them again when, I, when I'm bored, but they're okay, eh. Rambo 4, though? Yo, I saw that for the first time, what, three days ago? The movie's so bloody, so gritty. I, I, I did not expect it to be that good. Rambo 4 is crazy. It made, I'm excited for Rambo, like, Last Blood. I, I'm gonna get that on 4K. Like, that, I, I'm, I'm gonna get that next week, because Rambo 4 was so insane. I love Rambo 4. And it's Rambo, first, you know, First Blood, 
then Rambo, which is Rambo 4, then 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are like, a, you know, action, whatever. But first one and the fourth one, oof. Underrated or not really well known. Or I never heard of this till last year. Uh, Ravenous, good cannibal movie. Came out in 1998, I think. With a Dewey from Scream. <laughs> so, pretty good. Good blood. You know, nice uh, story about uh, Wendigos and shit. You know. And, you know, there's an interesting story behind it. It takes place in the Spanish-American War, right? Uh, Thanks. So. I don't remember. Yeah, it's, it's a period piece, so it's good. I like period pieces, as I've said before. Return of the Living Dead, Blu-ray. Great horror movie. You know, how some comedy... No, no, it, it, it's a horror comedy, but it's mostly horror, straight up. If you haven't, you, if you like zombie movies, I think you should watch it. Even if you don't like eighties, I still think you should give it a chance. Like, it's a really good zombie movie. Like, it's probably the most. I don't want to say scary because it's definitely not in that sense, but in terms of hopelessness, yeah. Because it's not like Romero's zombies where you shoot them in the head or, you know, you just chop them up and done. It's like every part of the, the zombie moves. So it's like there's nothing you could do to stop it. It's crazy. Requiem for a Dream. A movie when I was first watching it, I wasn't feeling it. But I think after the 45 minute mark, it just started hitting and hitting and hitting. And before I knew it, I was like, oh. Yeah, this, this movie's insane. This movie's. Yeah, it's about, you know, how, the, how drug usage can just screw up your life. That's pretty much what it's about, man. No, I look, now that I'm thinking about it, just talking about it, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I started off slow. It's almost like how drugs affect your life. When you first use it, it ain't not, you know, it ain't nothing. But then if you keep, you know, going down that wrong path, you're, you're going to end up, like, really, really in a bad hole. I actually got this last week, the Rush Hour Trilogy Collection. I'm really excited to see this. I think it comes with uh, two extra discs of special features. So that is, uh, that's awesome. I can't wait to go through that. Robocop, 80s action, blood fest. <laughs> awesome movie. I don't know what to say about it. Rocky, sports drama. I, I, I spoke about it like several times already. Like on the way to getting here, but it comes with the first six in a nice little set. It has some, I don't know why I took it out. It's pointless. But, you know, it has some posters and other stuff that comes with it. First one, it's an amazing movie. It came out in 1976. Story about a guy, he has like nothing, then he has to prove to himself in the world that he can beat Apollo Creed. Second one is a rematch against Apollo Creed. Third one is a Mr. T. I don't, you know, second and third one are okay. Fourth one is famous for the Ivan Drago fight, how like insane that one is. You know, fifth one I haven't seen yet, but people say it's pretty bad. Sixth one I haven't seen, just called Rocky Balboa. I haven't seen it yet, but people say it's pretty good. And I already spoke about Creed and Creed 2. But if you haven't seen any of the Rocky movies, you know, definitely try them, you know. I don't even think two, I mean two and three sound bad. They're not bad, but if you don't like the first one, two and three may not do it for you, but you may like the sixth one because it's more modern, you know? It's, it's all about how you get into a movie. I don't care if you start with the sixth one or, you know, it sucks if you do, but I'd rather you get into it one way and then eventually watch them and just never watch them at all. And that finishes this shelf. I believe this is number four. So we're gonna go to the fifth one. We're almost done. We're more than halfway done. Don't worry. Alright guys, we have about two more shelves left. Let's see if we can bang these out. And we're going to first start with Saw, The Complete Collection. I grew up watching these movies. Like, literally, I grew up watching them. Love the first one. Well, not love. I like the first one. I don't like it as, as much anymore. I think maybe because... I think I saw them way too much as a kid. So I'm just... I'm over them. Story gets a little convoluted. And it's like you kind of have to watch them in order. Like, you can't just pop in Saw 4. Well, you can, but you're going to be like, who the fuck is who again? You know what I mean? Like, you can't just watch and turn your brain off. You can, but you're going to be so bored when you're talking about, like, the story and things like that. So it's something you kind of have to, like, watch all in a row. But the first two, I like. The third one is almost, like, two hours. That one is really long. I don't know, but... Yeah, it... But, you know, in regards to the traps themselves, so obviously, you know, it's really bloody and all that stuff. I love, you know, 
you, have you have you seen so far like bloody movies so it's not it's not bad at all it's, yeah I don't, I don't know and this this got lost with the s's but the roommate i saw this in the theaters pretty bad but it was like three dollars anywho back to the letter s scarface found us at fye i have to watch it never seen scarface before scream Wes Craven, love Scream. He didn't write them though. I think Kevin Williamson wrote them, but he directed them. So yeah, Wes Craven, you know, or at least affiliated by Wes Craven in some way. But yeah, I, anywho, uh, the first the, the first movie's amazing. It's a, it's a nice little meta, you know, obviously towards slasher movies. I think it's really well written. Came out in 96, so the movie's as old as I am. I think it holds up really well. Scream 2, not so much. Sure, it could be a little boring. It's like two hours, you know. Two hours slasher. You gotta, you gotta keep them entertained. It's not bad though. You you can make it through, but you'll be there'll be there'll be some points where you'll be looking at your watch like, all right, let's let's keep it moving here. Like an hour and thirty minutes, and it's like, all right, okay, we can we can end this. Scream three. I've only seen once, and everyone says it's not that good, so I haven't seen it that you know since. I'm sure it's not terrible, but it. I'm not gonna sit down for screen three unless I'm doing like a screen marathon. Oh, and then uh, it has a bonus disc. So the, I think there's four discs in here, but it's just uh, the first three because there was a gap. The first screen three came out like oh one, and screen four didn't come out until I think 2010. So for a while, this was like you know the complete collection. Then they made this movie, and now they're going to make a fifth. And I think the gap between these two were shorter than the gap between four and five, so that's interesting. This movie, I think, it came out twenty ten. So, wow. Yeah. A Scout's Guide to Zombie Apocalypse. Pretty funny. I liked that a lot more the first time I saw it. And then when I bought it and watched it a second time, I was like, eh. But no, it's, it's pretty funny. You know, horror comedy, zombie movie, zomcom. I think that's what they call them. Selma, mandatory movie, obviously, MLK, good drama, nothing else I need to say about it. Searching, awesome thriller, a lot of people may not give it a chance because it has the unfriended vibe, like it's like all on a computer screen, but it's really good. Seven, I, I, I fell asleep while watching it, I have to give it a second chance. Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt, everyone says it's a good movie. I think David Fincher, could be wrong, I think it was David Fincher, but, anywho, uh, Shark Night, I like, I, I remember seeing it in a the theater and I, I liked it, and I found it for dirt cheap, so I'm gonna watch that again, The Shawshank Redemption, I never finished, I know, shoot me, I never finished it, I started it really late, and I loved what I saw, I got up to where he was doing the like the taxes for the inmates or whatever, or he was doing taxes for like the, the workers, not the inmates. So he was doing, you know, I don't remember exactly what's going on, but he was doing the, the auditing paperwork for them. And he went, oh, okay, but I got, I watched this again. I loved what I saw, but that, that was like months ago. So I have to rewatch it. Silent Night, remake of the 1980, well, reboot, because it has, it's, it has nothing to do with it really, other than the name. It's based on a, well, a real incident where this guy dressed up as Santa and I think he killed ex-wife and the entire family dressed as Santa and he used a, a flamethrower and all that stuff so you know very bloody movie but it's good like you want Christmas horror try on sign at night sleepers um, I never saw this one yet but I heard it was really good you know ensemble cast you know Dustin Hoffman Kevin Bacon Brad Pitt uh, Jason Pat. Well, I, I never even heard of Jason Patrick, but there you go. Stand by Me, a really, really good Stephen King adaptation. Uh, I used to make fun of this movie in a way, not not only in a bad way, but oh, it's the greatest movie ever. Where like kind of nothing happened. You know, there you know, there's a plot. The kids are trying to find a dead body, but throughout mo throughout most of the movie, they're just walking. But it's it would, it's it's awesome. Coming of age stuff. Straight out of Compton, awesome docu drama that's semi, well, I think I would say 70, 65 percent accurate about the NWA founding and all the record bullshit with the, uh, you know, Jerry Heller and all that shit. 
have Straw Dogs, a movie that I saw for the first time recently. Amazing. Amazing movie. Really gets you to think afterwards. In, in my opinion. Like, a lot of things in the movie, you're just like, why'd it go down like that? Or what if he didn't do it like that? What if, you know, really gets you to think. I love Straw Dogs. Spider-Man 1. Never saw this. Never saw the Raimi trilogy. Like this one. Everyone says part two is better, so I'm excited for part two. Survival of the Dead. Got it for one dollar last week at Dollar Tree. George Romero. People said it's better than Diary of the Dead. So that's a good thing. Superman Triple Feature. I have not seen any of these yet, but I got it for dirt cheap, and I really want to see the first two real bad. This one, I'm not, you know, I'm not as excited for, but, you know, it could be good. Came out 06, I think, that last one, but the Richard Donner ones are the classics. I just haven't seen them. Taken, a uh, two-disc set. Liam Neeson doing his thing. Taken 2. Haven't seen it, but I, got, I found it for a dollar, so fuck it. Terminator, I... I I think I think it's better than Terminator well, Two, in my or I was I prefer to watch this one. I, maybe the second one is a better made film, yes, but I I prefer the first more gritty, raw. I think it's genuinely a horror film, like especially the first like third or first half. It plays out like a slasher movie, like literally. Terminator Two is a much more grander, epic movie, obviously. So yeah, it's gonna be better. It's longer. It was supposed to be the end of the end, but you know it kept going, but. Both of these movies are great, and it's a great double feature if you have time on a Saturday, like 1 o'clock on a Saturday or Sunday, not doing shit. Got to like 5 for dinner. Watch them Terminator. Texas Chainsaw, the beginning. A lot of people hate this movie. Me, I like it. You know, people get lost, they get cut up, bloody mess. Well, it's, just, it's a follow-up to the remake, which I don't have, but I gotta get it. Remake is better, yeah, but this is more bloody, you know, it's, I don't know, I mean, if you like bloody Texas, you know, chainsaw shit, you know, it's fine, bro. It's very, uh, it's just very basic about it, I think that's why people don't really like it. It's literally just the same thing again, just even more intense, but Arlie Ermy's still in it, you can't go wrong with that. They Live, um, I don't love this movie, but I do like it. I can sit through it. It's a little slow sometimes, you know, but awesome fight scene with Keith David, you know. A lot of stuff holds up today, you know, in certain ways. You know, what messages are we being sent and how we're interpreting them. Or one man versus, you know, a corrupt society or establishment, things like that. This is 40. Yeah, I think it's a follow-up to Knocked Up, or a sort of sequel to Knocked Up. I like it, it's just too long, like two and a half hours almost. Like, yeah, it did not need to be two hours and 17 minutes. Another one of my favorites, John Carpenter's The Thing. Can't go wrong with this movie. If you haven't seen it, what are you doing? This is the end. Uh, is this Judd Apatow? I think, or it's his crew, or you know what I mean, like a lot of people he works with, rather, but... No, yeah, this is a good movie, you know, good, uh, you know, sex, com raunchy comedy type of thing. It's about the end of the world and how these, how these people are going to survive. Titanic, two-disc Blu-ray set. I haven't seen, you know, well, I've seen Titanic, but I haven't seen it on Blu-ray, but I picked it up. Why not? Titanic. And I don't have the VHS anymore, so i got to get the Blu-ray. True Romance, saw it for the first time last week. I love this movie. It's, it's so it's so funny. Like, <laughs> and it, it, it's like a long ass adventure. And I was watching the special features, and Brad Pitt, Brad, Brad Pitt was talking like how this is like a, a teenage boy's wet dream. And I'm like, that's like a, the perfect way of describing it because everything he's doing in this movie is like what you're not supposed to do in life. <laughs> like, but he's just doing it, and he's having a, a good time. And the ending, well, I don't want to give it away, but just watch it. It's so. Good. A lot of people don't like it because they think it's a little unrealistic how it went down, but how these two oh, shit, but how these two types of characters like are, because you know, I guess they're street people, for lack of a better term, like they would do ridiculous things like that, or 
they would kind of fall in love quick, you know. If you don't have people show you appreciation for who you are very often, people fall quick, you know. A lot of people are like, oh, it wouldn't happen. I'm like, yeah, you need to talk to more people. People, not everyone are, it's the same, you know. But anywho, Us by Jordan Peele. I don't have Get Out. Uh, I think Get Out is better. I've only seen this in a movie theater once. I liked it all until the last, like, ten minutes. I was kind of scratching my head, but... I mean, some things made sense. I think some people were going a little too far. Oh, nothing made sense. I mean, I think some of it makes sense, but um, um, maybe they could have unloaded a little bit more, like throughout the movie, because it just felt like, and not even like in a good way, like a huge dump of information and exposition. But you know, good good stuff. A lot of horror movies were like shitty in two thousands, and there's been a lot of like better tier horror movies recently like even if you don't like all of them like i can respect things like midsommar you know i love hereditary but i hate i, I don't I, I don't like midsommar uh uncut gems adam sandler i like this movie very different not comedy i think it's like, like drama thriller always seen it once but i was engaged the whole time and that's why i bought it because i'm gonna watch it again <clears throat> wedding days haven't seen this yet one dollar one of my favorite movies, like of all time, Whiplash. Saw this for the first time last year, but it's so good. Like my heart was like thumping certain moments. Like this movie is like, crazy, crazy, crazy. Really good movie. And I did like band and you know marching band, so I relate to it a little bit. Obviously, nowhere near as intense, but no, there was like, a lot of stuff in the band room. I was like, oh, it took me back to school, you know, shit like that. Watch Whiplash if you haven't. The less you know, the better. Yeah, we're gonna finish this second shelf right now. All right, we have made it to the last shelf. So there will be some Blu-rays, a few steelbooks, and DVDs to wrap it all up. No, but if you made it this far, honestly, like I sincerely appreciate it. Like I'm, this is my first time doing this, so if my delivery is boring. Like I, I, mean, I genuinely apologize, but it's just how it is. You know, I'm not gonna. Pretend to be someone else, but anywho, let's, let's, let's finish this. Willard, underrated thriller. I don't want to, yeah, horror thr thriller first, but it's about a guy who's obsessed with rats and the obsession goes way too far and he's really secluded and interesting like story about how like he uses these, these rats to get revenge against the people in his life because he has, he, to him, he could form a bond better with a rat than most people. So it's like a story of how he falls, almost. Good stuff. The Witch. This is another movie that I got after, I, you know, I, I saw um, House of the Devil. And people said it's really good. And I liked The Crucible. So I wanted to give it a chance, like a period piece. And I liked it. I liked it a lot. It's a really good movie. Very slow, you know. And a lot of things are implied, not shown but it's really creepy and effective in how it chooses to tell its story, in my opinion. So, uh, that, like I said, everyone's different. I don't really like some other slow horror movies, but The Witch, The, the Witch clicked with me the first time. Like when I saw it, I was like, ah, I see why people love this. It's a really creepy movie. Wrong turn one through five. The first one, good. The second one is my favorite. I saw it when I was younger, it's a guilty pleasure. Third one I never saw. Fourth one is okay. It's, it's just so, it's like the most standard slasher movie that could have been, like, it came out like 08, I think? 2011? Wow. Well, it came out 2011. And it's, for 2011, just so run of the mill. Like, it's like, it almost, like, there's a huge body count, like 10 people, they all get killed. So that's what makes it good. If you like slashers, then yeah. And it takes place in the snow, so it's different. But. Yeah. The fifth one I never saw. The sixth one people say is pretty bad. And then there's a, there's also a reboot. So I, I haven't seen all of these yet. But no, the, the, so the first one and well, the, the one that's really worth your time is the first one. The second one I like because I find it funny. And then, uh, yeah, the rest are, the rest are hit or miss. But check out the first one if you have it. We Are the Party. Bought it for a dollar. I have no, I think it's like Project X type movie. Never seen it. I'm gonna do all four of these at once. The uh, I got these on Black Friday, so Dragon Ball Z is my favorite of all time. 
even though Hunter like Hunter Hunter is like a better show, like or better anime rather. Yeah, like, I'll admit that. But my favorite is Dragon Ball Z. So even though I don't own the Dragon Ball Z Kai series, it's too expensive. But I picked these up because I had enough money at the time, and then they, you know they were on sale. So why the fuck not? Yu Yu Hakusho. I saw the I saw this series the first time when I was a sophomore in college. So really late, but I loved it. And when I first saw it, I thought, uh, you know, Spirit Detective, Dark Tournament, like Chapter Black, and uh, the four, uh, Three Kings, right? I thought, I'll be quick about this because not everyone likes anime, but I thought season two would be the best, like Dark Tournament. Like, I liked that as I was watching it, but as I, you know, thought about it throughout the years, because I saw it five years ago almost, I think Chapter Black might be the best. I really like Chapter Black. Good stuff. But the whole series is good. Look, it's, it's basic. It's pretty, like, by the numbers shown and stuff. Like, with stuff out now, like Jujutsu Kaisen, I mean, I gotta finish and catch up. But, and, like, Demon Slayer, I never tried yet. But, Crazy Ant or Hunter Hunter, even, like, Togashi's next series, I think are better. But, doesn't mean you can't appreciate or like the class. Doesn't mean you can't like something that's not as good. People would be like, oh, Hunter Hunter's better. Why watch it? Because you could watch both. But, anywho. Steel books now, sorry. John Carpenter's Halloween 35, 35th year edition, found at FYE. Uh, that's a really good transfer. A lot of special uh, editions. I think they made a 4K and everything, but I'm cool with this Blu ray. Got it. I think I already said FYE. This is at the same time. Uh, Halloween 2. I never saw this movie until I bought it and I popped it in. It was pretty good. Um. Not as good as the first, but it's, like, the only time you would watch it is if you just watched the first one, kind of, because it follows up, like, immediately after. But this case is so, this steelbook is so good, like, I had to buy it, you know. And it has a, t a TV cut, which I'm interested in checking out. It's DVD, but even so. Halloween 2 is a good sequel, though. Most horror sequels, even by part 2, are pretty bad. But Halloween 2 holds up. This is Rob Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, I like this movie a lot, mainly because of how like intense Michael is. Like no, like, he was like busting through doors and he was like seven feet tall. And I like the Dr. Loomis and uh, Michael, uh, I guess chat sessions they were having. Like yeah, with Michael less is more. I, I understand all that, but I, I like those scenes with Malcolm McDowell and you know the kid just talking. It was, it was interesting. Uh, the rape scene was unnecessary. You know, I you know I spent your grave rape revenge, but that was a story about a girl who got raped and she gets revenge by killing them. That was the point of the story. Michael did not. You know, I'm not the first to say this, but you know, Michael didn't need a rape. Well, he didn't rape. You know, there's a rape scene. It didn't need to be there in a Halloween movie. And in, in the theater cut, it wasn't even there to begin with. So I don't know why Rob Zombie decided to do that. But other than that, you know, it's it's good. Just. You don't have to, once again, you don't have to be like, oh, it kills the original. No, it, no, it didn't. The original's right there. It's right there. You, you can you can play it. You don't need it to ever buy the Rob Zombie one. But in my opinion, he tried to do something different. You know, it, not everything worked, but the things that really worked, in my opinion, worked. Part two, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. I can't defend that. Part two was terrible. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Steelbook. Uh, it's the 40th edition? Yeah, 40, 40th year anniversary can't talk i think this is fye exclusive i could be wrong i could be wrong but i've seen other steel books but i love this cover the armadillo and everything i think that's it right no i have one more i never saw this movie but the steel book looks really cool uh carlito's way al pacino never never seen the scarface i haven't seen this one either but the steel book was really cool so i bought it and it was on sale, so why not? Alright, so now we're gonna do some multi packs. So by then I mean like two and one. So Devil's Rejects, Rob Zombie, and uh House of a Thousand Corpses. This is part one. It's part two. Never seen a Thousand Corpses, but I learned that Dwight from the office is in it, so now I'm really interested. And uh the Devil's Rejects. Really good road horror, I've been saying, you know, road horror, awesome movie. Those Rejects is so good. I didn't like it the first time I saw it, but I saw it, I think, two years ago? And I was like, this movie's entry-level disturbing movie. Like, you want to start getting some crazy movies? 
Like, oh, I don't think I can handle I spit in my grave. If you can't handle those rejects, you can't handle I spit. You know what I mean? Like, so if you want to get into more, in, or last house on the left, more intense stuff, you know, you can try the Devil's Rejects. Really good. Like, it's, it's a movie that's really, like, gross and disturbing, but because it was used in a way, like, that went with the story, it was fine. Like, most people who don't like, like, crazy horror movies, like, the, the, a lot of people like Devil's Rejects because it wasn't just violent for violent. Like, it felt like Rob Zombie was actually trying to take a mess your eyes and, like, look how fucked up these people are really. but anywho i could be just overthinking it I'm, I'm not a fucking film reviewer but anywho uh never sleep again in crystal lake memories even if you don't like freddy or jason if you just like movies i recommend well you should watch the first ones just so you have some con well the first freddy the first jason isn't that good you can watch part four but you should watch at least one or two movies so you have some context in my opinion, but even if you don't, these documentaries are really good just for understanding how the movies were made. So many interesting facts, easily rewatchable. They, I had it on and I thought I was gonna watch like one segment or whatever, and I ended up plowing through the whole. Thing. It's just so interesting. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's so, it's so much. It's like a love letter to all the fans. Like that's the, well, why are you a horror fan? Like, cause there's so many like things that are unique to the horror genre, and yeah, we have a lot of bad movies. But the good thing about those bad movies is there's a lot of memories with those like bad movies, you know. So these documentaries help preserve that, and yeah, even though these, you know, a lot of them are B-list actors who end up in these movies, it's it's nice to see where they're at now, you know. Or them talking about how the movie was made, or you stuff perspectives you would have never have gotten if it weren't for this documentary. Yeah. I'd say you know a lot. I'm sorry. I just how it ad lib like Naruto, that that by all type shit. If you watch Naruto, you know what I'm talking about. If not, I'm sorry. That was terrible. But uh, triple pack. It came in the eBay thing I talked about. I haven't seen any of these. The first one is Scar. Then Terror Trap, then Midnight Movie. I have no idea if these are good. They don't look good, but sometimes you can be surprised. Uh, Extract and The Switch. Extract, uh, I liked, but I found out it was Mike Judge. And I guess for a Mike Judge, it's not that. I, I don't know what makes sense. For a Mike Judge movie, I expected a little better. But it, the premise is really funny. Like, he wants to cheat on his wife. So he hires a like a male stripper to it, to incentivize that so he can go cheat on the wife. It, it was funny, don't get me wrong. Funny movie, but not as good as Office Space. Like Office Space is like two tiers on top. I'll watch Office Space any day over Extract, but Extract is good. And then the Switch. I haven't seen it yet, but people said, you know, it's good. Nice little it's rom com. People should have rom coms too much. You're fine. It's just, some people will watch only rom-coms, and that, that's when people are like, Oh, you watch rom-coms all the time? But every so often, they're, they're good. Uh, triple Feature. Uh, I bought this. I haven't seen any of these movies, except for The Party. The Party is amazing. I want to get its own like set, because like, movies that I love, I'm like, oh, I gotta do it justice. Goodfellas, I saw the first half, fell asleep, but I loved it. I, I, I think I'm going to love the second half. Like I, I don't know why I haven't finished it yet. And, the Aviator, I have, I have no idea what it's about, but but from the few people that I've asked, they said that like the Aviator is the worst, but not that it's a bad movie, but it's just the worst out of all of them. So who knows? Shit, there we go. Uh, and last of the multi packs, the Hannibal Collector, Hannibal Collect, the Hannibal Lecter Collection. So it has Manhunter, Signs of the Lambs, and Hannibal. I've only seen Signs of the Lambs, which is a great thriller horror, horror thriller, whatever you want to call it. Awesome. Yeah, like the, the even the, the dialogue is so intriguing. Like I was in the Hyundai. I was tired that day too, but I made it through that movie. I was like, yes, this is a, a true horror film. And we're going to finish this off with some DVDs. We're almost there. Uh, DVDs aren't enough. Well, I don't think these were alphabetical either, but there's not many of them. Dolores Claiborne, Stephen King adaptation, uh, overlooked. Not a lot of people know about this one. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, so I'm not going to try to. I'll do a review on it a different day. So if I've been ad-libbing horribly, that's why I need time to rewatch it and gather my thoughts. But this is this is really good. 
I love Dolores Claiborne. Frontiers, uh, that new wave French horror thing that people talk about. Yes, this is a this is a really good movie. It's like insane, over the top, but not goofy with its violence. Like it's raw, over the top violence. Like hard to watch type violence, but really good. Well, you know, well shot. Has in a, you know pretty good action towards the end, if I remember correctly. I've only seen it. No, I've seen it twice, but it's been a while. Uh, inside or in French, all in uh, I wanted to get these on Blu-ray, but I didn't want to risk like buying the wrong region. And I don't know. I was. I don't know. I should take a risk now, cause now that before KTV, like DVD quality, it's ass. You know what I mean? It's it's watchable. You know, obviously you could watch it just fine, but the whole time, like, I just want the Blu-ray version. But anywho, yeah, I saw the DVD for this. Uh, this is. I think I like this more than this movie. This movie's fucked up. Like, this the concept is fucked up. It's like a lady who wants to have the baby inside another woman, so she takes a you know pair of scissors and she wants to slice her stomach and grab the baby. You know, it's scary. Another dimension extreme, Eden Lake. Uh, I, you know, I found out about this movie through a, well, a lot of these movies through a YouTuber called Horrible Reviews. He was one of my favorite YouTubers for a while. So I watched this movie. I, I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it because it was just, it was too depressing the whole time. Like even movies like Hostel, where it's all people getting tortured and fucked up. Like there's more com, you know, not I'm gonna say comedy. There's, there's more like uplifting parts or something. This movie felt. Besides the first 15 minutes or 20 minutes, it felt bleak the entire time. And some of the, you know, the, the, the enemies are the kids, you know. Some of the kids get their comeuppance, sure. But the one you wanted to get it the most doesn't get it. You know, the, you know it's a bad ending, just bleak the whole time. Like, but I saw it again, like, two weeks ago. And it's... I like it a little more, you know, it's, it's a bleak, because I knew I was getting myself into, it's very bleak, so if you don't like bleak movies, don't watch it, like, you're gonna be like, what? Uh, I got this at Walmart for like two dollars, three movies, a DVD, you know, a Zombieland first one, obviously it's a great movie, it's just on DVD, not another teen movie, haven't seen it yet, but I heard it's good, I like raunchy comedies, and 30 minutes or less. Haven't seen that one either, but these are all watching. It's a laugh out loud collection, just on DVD. Making DVDs sound so primitive, but it's not as good, man. This is actually a Blu-ray disc, but in the shitty uh, Blockbuster or Best Buy case, so I have to change it. So it's with the DVDs, because it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. But Drag Me to Hell, I used to love this movie, but the more I watch it, it's, it's, too, it's too goofy. And I don't mind Goofy, but I don't, it's, I don't know. It wasn't doing it for me. There's some parts that I still like and that are... It's weird. I'm, I'm like contradicting myself. It wasn't doing it for me. It was like too funny to be scary and too scary to be funny. I don't know. I can't help how I feel. Uh, this one I found for like $2, so I bought it. But now because I have it, I, I can't justify a Blu-ray purchase. But I spirited away. I'm, I'm probably going to have to like... Throw this or give this away so I can purpose so I can get the Blu-ray. Cause if I keep if I had this, I'd be like, oh, I already got the DVD, you know. But I don't know. My girlfriend didn't like this one, but I I love you know Spirited Away is great. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what she was up to that day. I, I gotta show her again. But yeah, really good, you know, anime type, you know, how Miyazaki movie is the only one I've seen, and you know I'll probably get to his other ones, but. Spirited Away is amazing. It was a film that scared me when I was younger. You know, some creepy looking demons and ghosts and shit. One dollar Walmart Ali DVD. I liked what I saw so far. Didn't finish it. It was good. H2O, Jamie Lee Curtis. I haven't seen it. This is actually like my mom, so I just took it. Yeah. She didn't even notice or whatever. Uh, this is a a movie that I like. I didn't like it as much the second time I saw it, but you know maybe in the future. But it's a crazy movie. I recommend it. It's called Witchin and Bitchin. It's a terrible name. It's a Spanish movie. It's actually called uh, 
I think uh, Las Brujas de Zucamundi, which is like the witches of Zucamundi. It's like the, the town where the witches are from. Like Bruja means witch in Spanish. But um, crazy. Yeah, it's a really crazy, unique movie. It's almost like From Dusk Till Dawn, but not as good. And I don't want to. This movie's good. I like it, but yeah, that's the best way to describe me. It starts off one way, and then it just changes. All it's it's the same type of movie, you know. I probably just like get, gave it away, but there there it is. At least you know it exists, you you know. And last but not least, because I got this recently, I couldn't find it on Blu-ray. Dead End with Ray Wise. I love this movie. I saw this growing up when I was a kid. We had it on DVD. I don't know where it is now, so I had to rebuy it. But really, it's low budget horror, so you know, a little cheesy, early 2000s y, but you can't go wrong with it. Good stuff. And we are done. That is all the Blu rays I have, and I did not keep count, but I do think it's around 200. Well, DVDs for the two 4Ks, steelbooks, whatever. But yeah, so I'm gonna do this again in about six months to a year. Uh, if people comment below and, you know, give recommendations or want me to talk, you know, actually have thoughts on these movies, you know, let me know. Because me ad-libbing is horrible. I'm sorry I had to go through that. But, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for watching and bye.